This post will tie back to my post about the study of reincarnation that I'm doing. I'm not really sure what it all means still, but I just came across some very interesting information in a book I bought recently called Reincarnation, the Missing Link in, Re in Christianity. Did you know it was a belief kept by many Christians until 500 AD when it was outlawed in Rome in order for the eternal torment doctrine to take hold? to keep people in fear of the religious and political leaders. Some of this information makes me uncomfortable, to be honest. But at the same time, it is confirming some personal revelations Father has given me. As I've stated before, I'm starting to believe all religions had some truth and also many lies. And just with Christianity, the more I study, the more I have to throw out but also know that there are some very great truths in it. So, the same with other cultures and beliefs. I will not agree with everything, nor disagree with everything they teach until I have studied it out in reference to what Father is teaching me in the Spirit. One revelation that is making me consider what I've been reading was the dream I've spoken of often that allowed me to be open about the Flat Earth. A quick recap of the end of the dream. I was taken off the earth and into the stars. I saw the earth below me. Then I shot up further and saw an ocean. And in the ocean were planets floating. I only remember one in particular being Saturn with its rings. And then I shot up further into a bright white room with angels in it. In the middle of the room was the pool with the planets in it. Then you begin to see so many of these occult Hollywood producers putting out movies and TV shows with references to Saturn in them, to dimensional travel through water portals. In the TV show, The OA specifically, they say in the near-death experiences of one character, she travels to the rings of Saturn based on the sounds that are recorded. The more I'm studying these strange mysteries and how there are references to things that are also spoken of in the Bible, I am wondering if these evil people take a lot of truth but twist it in a way. If much of what they teach is truth but they worship the wrong entity, namely Lucifer or Prometheus and many other names for the same person, and wish for you to go in the opposite path, like their path, uh, like, instead of heading away from Saturn, head towards it, um, like, this is just conjecture at this point. Um, the following quotation from Platonic Nicomachus, uh, something, page six, uh, illustrates the meaning of the hypate and the neat, or the highest and lowest string of the lyre instrument. From the motion of Saturn, says he, the most remote of the planets, the appellation of the gravest sound, hypate, hypate, is derived. But from the lunar motion, which is the lowest of all, the most acute sound is called neat, or the lowest. Uh, from the quote above, they believed Saturn was the furthest planet from us, but with the highest vibration, I think that's what it said, uh, because it was represented by the highest string on the instrument, the, the highest frequency, I think that's what it was saying. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, there is something definitely sketching going on with Saturn, and I don't understand it yet. I am of the opinion, the evil ones worship Saturn, that it is the god of death and time, essentially. Uh, NASA shows us fake imagery of the hexagon on top of Saturn, which represents a flattened cube. The cube is portrayed in much of Hollywood as dimensional symbolism as well. I'm so confused if Saturn is supposed to be a good or a bad thing. Um, or something given to us by Father and the enemy has just twisted it? Okay, so here is what I just read about the Grecian Orphic group in the book I bought. Quote, the Orphics, like the Hindus, taught that within each of us resides a divine particle. Uh, and remember in the article I posted, and I made a video about this on the ancient Essenes, 
uh, which were the early followers of Yeshua, they taught the same thing. As the divine breath of Father entered into us to give us life, we are all a part of the divine, a lesser of the whole. This was taken out of the Christian belief system, again, by Rome, who taught it was an evil thing to believe we were a part of the Father who created us. Quote, Poems inscribed on thin gold leaf tablets, buried in the hands of Orphic believers in the 4th century BC, clearly spell out Orphic belief in divin divinization. Uh, these tablets were discovered in southern Italy, were designed to coach the dead on how to behave on the other side. They instruct the initiate that after death he should recite the following words before the goddess Persephone. I also avow me that I am of your blessed race. I have flown out of the sorrowful, weary wheel. I have passed with eager feet to the circle desired. The hoped-for response from Persephone is... Happy and blessed one, thou shalt be God instead of mortal. When the verse speaks of flying out of the sorrowful, weary wheel, it is almost certainly referring to escaping the round of rebirth. And reaching the circle desired indicates that the soul has arrived at the sphere outside the matter universe. What is the sphere? The concept of heavenly spheres found in the mystery religions, holds that the world is ruled by the seven planets, the Sun, Moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. Each planet rules its own sphere. The Greeks believed that in order to attain divine union, the soul must pass through the seven concentric heavenly spheres, each one ruled by one of the planets, until it reaches the outermost sphere and escapes the matter universe altogether. I don't know why that just reminded me of uh, the Norse religion a little bit. You know, with their tree of life symbol, and it had all the spheres connected to the end of the branches. Uh, I wonder if that's a similar belief somehow. Um, anyway, uh, this journey is accomplished by giving up the negative energies or tendencies ruled by the planet. When the soul has purified herself fully, she is released from the wheel of rebirth. The circle desired would therefore be the outermost sphere, <clears throat> the realm outside the dominion of the planets. But the circle desired could have a further meaning. The Greek word translated as circle literally means crown. Some mystery religions used attaining the crown to represent identification with or becoming God. Therefore, as one gives up the tendencies binding him to the matter universe, he is preparing himself to attain the crown or union with God. Now, I will list some scripture from the Bible canon that seems to confirm some of what was spoken here of the Orphic Greeks. Since the book of Revelation was written on the Grecian island of Patmos, it makes sense to have been written in a way that Greeks would understand. Psalm 12, 6. The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth purified seven times. Zechariah 13, 9. This third I will put into the fire, I will refine them like silver and test them like gold. They will call on my name and I will answer them. I will say they are my people uh, and they will say the Lord is our God. Proverbs 17.3 Gold and silver are tested by fire and a person's heart is tested by the Lord. Isaiah 11.2 the spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of power, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. This could possibly explain the seven spirits of God. One, spirit of the Lord. Two, spirit of wisdom. Three, spirit of understanding. Four, spirit of counsel. 5. Spirit of Power, 6. Spirit of Knowledge, and 7. Spirit of the Fear of the Lord. 
Revelation 1.4 John to the seven churches that are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne. Revelation 3.1 And to the angel of the church in Sardis write, The words of him who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. Revelation 4, 5 From the throne came flashes of lightning and rumblings and peals of thunder, and before the throne were burning seven torches of fire, which are the seven spirits of God. Revelation 2, 10 Do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. I tell you, the devil will put some of you in prison to test you, and you will suffer persecution for ten days. Be faithful, even to the point of death, and I will give you life as your victor's crown. The Greek word stephanos, or crown, to encircle. Revelation 2.17 Whoever has ears, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who is victorious, I will give some of the hidden manna. I will also give that person a white stone with a new name written on it known only to the one who receives it. Uh, and this is a note. Uh, we have talked before that manna or bread is wisdom. My theory is the white stone is eternal life. See below. Again, looking into something we were told was evil in Christianity and the truth movement because the evil ones use it for evil purposes. This white stone, I believe, is speaking of alchemy. In alchemy, the Philosopher's Stone is a white stone of the purest gold. Um, and also, in alchemy, it talks often about changing different kinds of metals into pure gold, uh, purifying it, essentially. So, um, in a sense, that is alchemy in the scriptures. Um, since, since scripture talks over and over of purifying gold as a symbol for us purifying our spirits, I think it fits. Science is self itself has shown us pure gold has healing properties for the body and is used in natural remedies. Monatomic white gold, or ormus, also known as the philosopher's stone to some. In the mystery schools, they are seemingly obsessed with the philosopher's stone, as it means eternal life. We know through the words of Yeshua, however, the way to receive this stone or the crown, the circle of eternal life, is to be purified by following his commandments. We have spoken on the early Essenes, Yeshua's people, and their beliefs on becoming holy and pure. With all things in the book of Revelation, I believe the crown of life and the stone with the new name written on it, uh, which is a name that's different than the name of your body now, will be your eternal life and the true name of your pure spirit, which will be one with the Father in holiness and love and purpose. I found a chart of alchemical symbols and with planets and what metals they were linked with. Again, this is interesting in light of scripture, with, which talks of many different metals and them being purged in fires for purification. Here is another one from Jeremiah 6, 27-30. I have made you a tester of metals, and my people of the ore, that you may observe and test their ways. They are all hardened rebels going about to slander. They are bronze, uh, which is also copper in the interlinear version. They are bronze and iron. They all act corruptly. The bellows blow fiercely to burn away the lead with fire, but the refining goes on in vain. The wicked are not purged out. They are called rejected silver because the Lord has rejected them. Ezekiel 22, 17 through 22. And the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, the house of Israel has become dross to me. All of them are bronze and tin and iron and lead in the furnace. They are the dross of silver. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, because all of you have become dross, therefore, behold, I am going to gather you into the midst of Jerusalem. As they gather silver and bronze, again, the copper and the interlinear, 
and iron and lead and tin into the furnace to blow fire on it in order to melt it. So I will gather you in my anger and in my wrath, and I will lay you there and melt you. I will gather you and blow on you with the fire of my wrath, as you will be melted in the midst of it. As silver is melted in the furnace, so you will be melted in the midst of it, and you will know that I, the Lord, have poured out my wrath on you. Um, and you know, in all my my older studies on, you know, quote, eternal torment and stuff, which is ridiculous, um, the wrath of the Lord always has a purifying purpose. It's not just because he's angry and wants to destroy you or something. There is a reason for it. Just as a good parent here on earth, they don't let their child do whatever they want because that creates a spoiled brat. You need to give discipline in order to discipline and purify that child's actions. Um, okay, so according to the alchemical planetary metals, and I post the picture below, I'll go through that. Um, through this uh, planetary metals chart, many of these metals are spoken of in the fire of purification in scripture. The only one not listed that I know of is mercury. I'd really like any information for or against this you may have. Like, I will keep reiterating, I am staying open to possibilities right now and do not know it what exactly is truth or lies, except that I know the unchanging Father Creator and Yeshua the Messiah are truth. All I am seeing is a change, oh, all I am seeing a change in is the beliefs of religion we were taught being not totally true. There are patterns and things that are seemingly coming together in some sort of sense that is far different than what Rome has taught us. And so here are some of the pictures. Okay, so this is in the TV show The OA that I talked about in my last video about reincarnation. Um, so when this girl in the white sweater dies, uh, she is led to a small room full of stars. In the middle of the room is a pool of water, like in my dream, uh, where Katun, the gypsy-looking lady here, watches down into what is happening in the earthly dimension. Um, let me see if I can click on this. There we go. Okay, again in the OA, one of the kidnapped people dies and is revived by two of the other captors, or captured people. Uh, after they do the dance we spoke about in my previous post, it seems they purposefully made him look like our depictions of Christ, with the loincloth, the long hair, and the body posturing. Are they mocking him or saying something here about the dance? In both the OA and in Stranger Things, the use of water and death by drowning are seen as dimensional traveling symbolism. This is NASA's photo of Saturn with the hexagram on the North Pole. Uh, again, the hexagram. Uh, it is a two-dimensional cube. In the movie The Box, water is used as a dimensional travel symbol as well. And in The Box again, the husband is mm -hmm. held in a water cube above his wife. It breaks and he and she fall together, just covered in water. In the movie uh, Lady in the Water, a woman comes through a dimension through a pool in an apartment complex. In Cabin in the Woods, the cabin is represented by a Rubik's Cube. The entire movie is about dimensional travel, giant, quote, gods coming from under the ground, which if you've read the Bible, that sounds pretty familiar and five teenagers who must be used as a sacrifice to hold off the chaos from coming. Uh, in this movie, there's also a firmament of energy that they can't get past, and cube symbolism used in the movie. Uh, again, this is Cabin in the, in the Woods. Uh, the monsters are being held in cubes to be released upon humanity. And it was interesting, they were only released by the government. 
is the government controlling all of these things. Um, so in the OA again, someone draws a crude depiction of a teacher as a stripper on the whiteboard. The teacher is one of the five that does the dance, and I said of Shiva, at the end of the series. She draws a cube around the portrait, and we never know why. She just looks at it strangely. So here is the verse in Revelation that talks about the white, or the crown, um, and there you can see the word for crown is Stephanon. And here we go to the definition. Stephanon or Stephanos uh, means crown or garland. It was used in the Olympic athletic games as the crown of victory. Um, it was also used uh, of a plated wreath or crown, like the one made of thorns placed on the head of Christ at his trial. And the origin of the word is from stepho, meaning to encircle. Remember, we were just talking about uh, getting out of the, the heavenly spheres, or the planetary spheres, and getting to the circle. Um... I mean, I can't confirm this next picture because I don't speak Greek or read Greek, but this was from the book um, that I'm reading. It said, some early Christians interpreted their faith in light of Orphism, which taught oneness with God and reincarnation, as demonstrated by this 5th century ring. It depicts the Greek god Orpheus, reputed founder of Orphism, surrounded by a Christian inscription, the seal of John, the preeminent saint. And last picture were the planetary metal symbols. Uh, I'm just going to read them real quick. Um, gold was dominated by Sol or the sun. Silver was... Ugh, sorry. Let me get back. Okay. Silver was Luna or the moon. Copper was Venus. Iron was Mars, Tin was Jupiter, Mercury or Quicksilver was Mercury, and Lead was Saturn. Alright, so yeah, if you guys have any information for or against this, um, like I said, I don't really know anything about any of this stuff yet. I'm just kind of putting together some patterns that I'm seeing. Uh, please leave a comment below. Um, Alright, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.